Hello everyone, in this video I will show you a widget that I made that is part of a commercial product and it's based on Qt and the Vulkan API. And the main reason why I made it is to become more familiar with Vulkan. So I was looking for an API, the 3D API that I can use with Vulkan to render 3D graphics. And when I went on the uh, Qt website, I found this uh, code sample that is based on Qt Vulkan window. And it has some code that is provided, as you can see here. So uh, I made a, a solution based on that. And I'm going to show you, here it is. And the code is the same as you would see on their website. So when I run it, um, so basically all it does is, as you would find out, it just changes the, the background color to a different shade of green. And what I did also is I benchmarked it. So uh, it turned out that it's running at uh, 174 FPS, 175 FPS, which I was a bit surprised because uh, Vulkan is supposed to be faster, much faster. So the widget that I made is, this is the solution that I, uh, that I used to, to make it, is based on the CMake. So this, this project here, QVulkan widget, I call it QVulkan widget because I didn't find a similar name, which is interesting. Uh, so uh, I made a wrapper for uh, the Vulkan API. As you can see, all the classes here are uh, wrapping most of the components of Vulkan. Uh, for instance, uh, this one is a descriptor set. It's a, this is the header of the class. It has some, some methods that are wrapping the, uh, the Vulkan API. And this is the CPP uh, of the same class. I cannot show you too much because this is a commercial product that I'm working on. Um, so this is the, uh, the Vulkan widget. And the way to use it, uh, I've, I'm dem demonstrating it in several uh, sample codes here. So for instance, if you, the first one would be uh, Hello World. And the way to use it is to, uh, is to uh, derive it from uh, QVulkan. So in our case, it's, uh, I call it Vulkan widget. And there are only three methods that you need to override. And those are the three ones. And in our case, we are uh, just uh, overriding these three. So in this one and this one, there is not much to do because we are just going to be uh, uh, replicating the same behavior as in the uh, QVulkan window example on the Qt website. But uh, for the render method, I'm just uh, changing the, uh, the intensity of the background color. And this is a different color I'm going to use. It's, uh, it's a more reddish. So let me show you how it runs. So this is doing the same thing basically with a different background color. And I don't think the color would be a, a much impact on the frame rate. And as on, this, on the status bar here, I'm displaying you the FPS. And we can see it's way above 5,000, which is what Vulkan API is supposed to do. And this also displays the version of Vulkan being used and the graphic card that I'm using. So I'm using a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. And yeah, the FPS is pretty much high here. We are looking at more than 5,000 FPS. Uh, this is the first sample I made. Uh, the next one is uh, the traditional RGB triangle. Uh, let me show you this one. And uh, so this is just an RGB triangle, different color for every vertex. And it still runs pretty high. It's almost 5,000 FPS. Could be more if I'm if I was not recording this video. Okay. Uh, the RGB cube is the next one. So every face has a different color, and you know that uh, you you probably are noticing here there is some uh, trace logs, and every time I resize the window. The uh, swap chain and the resources of Vulkan has to be destroyed and recreated. This is how Vulkan works. And uh, these two uh, methods that I showed you, release uh, and, and initi initialize GPU resources, are made for that. So OpenGL does it for you. You don't have to do it, but Vulkan requires that. So every, every window resize requires you to destroy and, re and recreate the resources. And uh, this cube is running like at four point. 8,000 FPS, okay. Uh, the next one is the texturing. So this is just uh, an image, a QT logo on, QT logo I would say, I should say, not QT, 
uh, on a on a quad that is rotating. Okay, so this is like four six four four seven four thousand eight hundred FPS. Next one is uh, lighting. Uh, so here we have a cube that is rotating, and we have a spotlight applied to it. Uh, FPS still good for 8000 and because I really wanted to have a high FPS and unfortunately Q, Q Vulcan window doesn't provide it because this gives me a lot of room if I want to load a complex scene and uh, that this implementation implementation would really help me uh, next up is the uh, the shadows so same cube uh, spotlight and then you have a shadow on the floor and then of course every time you resize the window everything is recreated uh, the FPS has a bit of an impact but I'm pretty sure this uh, sample could be optimized it's something that every sample I did like in half a day each one just to demonstrate the the flexibility and the potential of this widget uh, this one is a bit heavier the model 3d uh, basically, this one uh, I have to load in a, a 3D model, and I found that 3D model online is the New York City block. It's a free model that someone else made, and it's pretty large. It's like 381 megabytes. So let me load this one. It's gonna take a few seconds to load because it's pretty heavy, and. Uh, there are a few modes that I implemented here in the menu above that I'm going to show you. Okay, I see something is happening. Yeah, some textures are not loaded like TGA because uh, TGA seems not to be supported properly with uh, the cute classes. So here is the model. Uh, I can rotate. I made a manipulator in 3D so I can use the mouse to to move it around, to translate it, and to zoom in and out. So uh, it's a pretty large model. And uh, the features I was just mentioning here is that you can watch it in, uh, look at it in wireframe mode, and not wireframe mode, shaded mode. Uh, there's also, you can call the back faces, but for some reason here in this model, it's not very, uh, very visible because the way that it was probably designed, you can see a bit of, uh, flickering here when I do it yeah but uh, I know that this is working but I because I tested it with uh, some simple geometry like triangles and the frame rate is like what 650 FPS uh, I don't remember how many polygons are there but I pretty much have quite a lot I would say okay uh, the next one is a multi GPU sample so basically what this one does is detects the, the GPUs that are on your system. In my case, I have only one. And what I can do is I can create uh, a window based off that GPU, which is called a physical device in Vulkan. And if I would have a different one, let's say we have an Intel board, I would create a window based on that Intel board. But now I can, in my current situation, I can create only one window of one physical adapter why would be good because you can you can spread the load of your rendering on different physical devices and also this is a good uh, way of building a CAD, CAD application so for instance uh, uh, on the Qt website they're showing that you can do multiple viewport within the same window uh, like in this example here multi viewport or this one but I don't think it's the right way because most of the uh, CAD applications that I've worked with like Blender or Unreal Engine or uh, they are using um, viewports each one is in different window and uh, you have a, usually a splitter between them so you can resize them so this approach will be more I think uh, appropriate to do so uh, this way yeah so you can use uh, you can create a, a Vulkan window or a swap chain, as they call it, based on a physical uh, physical device. 
and of course when you the more you create the more it's uh, it affects the frame rate like right now I'm at 2.7 thousand for each window all right okay so the next one is uh, text so this is basically a 2d text that I render on top of a Vulkan window so basically is, is, is really displaying the same string as you can see in the status bar except that it's doing it inside Vulkan so this is not a for instance a queue label that I lay on top of the Vulkan window because if you try to do that you're going to have some issues with the background of the queue label it won't be transparent it will be black it will be black I already tried that so this is basically a quad in 2d on which I apply a texture and inside that texture I draw this string and it's pretty, FPS is pretty good I mean 4.6 thousand uh, yeah if I resize it it's uh, it keeps its uh, aspect ratio so this is another thing I'm handling in the code okay and the last one is the particles so it's pretty simple particle system that I made in a half a day <clears throat> so those are uh, billboards basically sprites uh, facing the camera and you can move the camera around confirm that they are they are facing the camera uh, it's a very it was a very quick project that I did in half a day so I'm pretty sure uh, it can be still optimized it's running at f over 500 fps and uh, there are about 100,000 sprites and they are being recycled so basically this is a pool of sprites that I keep recycling as they go to the top and they disappear um, there are other techniques to make more advanced particles but I didn't have time to look into that so yeah so that's uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to show so I hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it you can press like and subscribe for more content and uh, I'll see you in the next one thank you very much and have a great day bye bye